Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap an Italian comedy film called At War with Love. Spoilers incoming. In July 1943, a well dressed war veteran, Arturo, nervously clasps a letter in his hand as he stands in front of the White House, preparing to see someone important. His story begins sometime in January 1943, when Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime dominated most of Europe and Benito Mussolini's fascist party was widespread. Determining the next phase of the war, preparations began for an invasion of Sicily. U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt discusses the offensive, soon to be known as Operation Husky. High-ranking mafia boss Charles Lucky Luciano, serving a long sentence for compulsory prostitution, is visited by Major Mayone in Clinton prison to strike a deal in which he guarantees full assistance of his organization in providing the U.S. government with intelligence. In the middle of the conflict, Arturo lives in New York with his beautiful girlfriend, Flora. Though he has bigger dreams to fulfill away from Italy, he works as a cook for Flora's uncle Alfredo, whose restaurant business is wholly connected to the mob. Unfortunately for him, she has been promised marriage to Carmelo, a well-known mafia boss, and son of Lucky Luciano's confidant, Don Tano Piazza. Major Mayon later talks to the Don, as he is reassured of capturing Adolf Hitler after two weeks. Meanwhile, in a Sicilian town called Crisafolo, a blind man is being used to signal incoming bomb attacks from American forces. A local named Agostino and his family rush out of their house while he carries a statue of Mussolini and argues with another woman carrying a statue of the Virgin Mary. The soldiers guide all the townsfolk as they make a run for it to the bombing shelter. His grandson, Sebastiano, calms himself by reciting his father's song, but like everyone inside, he freaks out as the bombs start dropping. Back in New York, Flora asks Arturo to meet her in secret later in the evening to discuss their plans to elope. Her uncle is vehemently opposed to their relationship since he looks down on Arturo for being a lowly servant and a bumbling idiot. As the couple sits on a park bench at night, Flora believes that the only way for her to get out of her arranged marriage is for Arturo to garner support from her father in Sicily. This bothers him since he might get killed in the middle of the ongoing war, and he has no means to travel there. Nevertheless, he makes a promise to her to save their relationship. Lost in thought, he stops by a local bar and tries to ask for some water, though he is unable to pronounce the word properly. An army general sitting close by mishears him saying he wants war, so he presents a recruitment flyer that enlists new soldiers to fight in Sicily. He thinks about it for a little while until he ultimately decides to join, much to the consternation of Carmelo, who storms his father's office to tell him the news. Don Tano assures him that his contacts in Sicily will take care of him so that he can marry Flora without any objections. Back in Crisafolo, Agostino talks to Mussolini's statue and declares his belief that his soldiers will prevail against the Allied forces. Upstairs in the bedroom, Sebastiano keeps himself awake, thinking about his father while his mother comforts him. Meanwhile, at the cliffside, the blind man Saro anticipates another bombing raid incoming, and once again, the whole town is alerted, forcing everyone to retreat to the bomb shelter. Agostino refuses to evacuate while the statue is locked inside the cabinet and is left behind. After the raid, Sebastiano runs outside to see the horrific destruction in his town. While recovering his father's letter buried in the sand, he is horrified to see his old neighbor dead after trying to save the Virgin Mary statue. Sometime after, airborne and seaborne allied forces arrive at the beaches of Sicily to carry out the operation. One of the paratroopers, OSS officer Philip Catelli, mistakenly lands inside a local farmer's home and begs the farmer not to shoot him for trespassing. Meanwhile, General George S. Patton receives word of the officer's plea for rescue in a submarine. Recent intel claims he is held prisoner by an Italian farmer while carrying a sensitive document. Dismissing the matter as something trivial, he decides to place Arturo on the rescue mission since he is the most inexperienced. Almost immediately, the new recruit, atop a donkey, is airlifted into the town. Onlookers look horrified upon seeing this, except Sebastiano, who is now convinced donkeys can fly after all. Later, the farmer hears a noise in his daughter's bedroom and finds Arturo and the animal crash land inside as the former tries to explain his hilarious predicament. He is brought to the back of the house, where he and Officer Catelli are held in chains. They discuss a plan to escape, so Arturo talks to the farmer, only to be berated about his daughter's inability to find a husband. Due to the mishap in the bedroom, he intends to kill both men, feeling the need to defend his daughter's honor. As Flora worries about the news about Sicily on the radio in New York, Carmelo shows up with some flowers and touches her passionately. 
she turns him down, insisting he should be with another woman loose with morals, as she believes in the sanctity of marriage. Meanwhile, in Sicily, Arturo shows a picture of Flora to the officer as he confesses his undying love for her and reveals his plan to ask Mr. Guarneri's permission for them to marry soon. Catelli then declares his love for Italy, saying that he enlisted in the U.S. Army to defend the country from invaders. Suddenly, the two men are rescued by Major Mayone, accompanied by his unit. He receives Catelli's sensitive package, which contains a list of Lucky Luciano's allies provided by Don Tano. On the way to Crisafolo, the Major meets one of them, the distinguished mob boss, Don Calogero Russo, to ask permission to take over the town to keep it safe from enemy invaders. The Don asks the American unit to wait for one hour before they come in so he can make some preparations. Upon leaving, the soldiers feel bad for him, as his car takes a long while to start and makes funny noises. As he gets back in town, he instructs the Italian army to hand over all their weapons to his men before surrendering to the Americans. He assures them that he will keep the Allied forces in line if they overstep their authority. Cheers and salutations await the troops as they enter Crisofolo. To show appreciation, they throw canned rations and cigarettes to the citizens. While the Major and the Don get more acquainted, Arturo gives an eager Sebastiano a can of milk, which the boy gratefully receives before alerting his mother. Just then, the entire Italian garrison comes out to surrender as they witness the Allies busying themselves with feeding the townsfolk. Amid the crowded streets, Agostino feels indifferent to the situation, refusing to accept handouts as he is the only true loyalist in town. Later at home, he asks his daughter not to consume the canned milk, fearing it is poisonous. After feeding it to the hens, he admits he is mistaken, so the family hurriedly consumes the can's contents. Days pass and the Americans have fully taken over Crisofolo, removing every trace of Benito Mussolini from the buildings. While Catelli interrogates a local man about a cow theft, Arturo tries to help explain the nuances of the man, as he makes a tisk sound, which means no. Later, he is ordered to meet with Don Calo to deliver an envelope containing a letter from Don Tano. Unbeknownst to Arturo, it details his desire to make him disappear so that his son and Flora can get married. After a few drinks, the bumbling recruit decides to leave, feeling a bit unnerved to be in the presence of a mob boss. When he leaves, Don Calo requests his henchman, Tonino, to kill him by any means. Some more days pass, as Flora tries her best to sabotage her upcoming marriage to Carmelo in any way she can. She complains about her wedding dress, the wedding gifts, and the restaurant setting, not wanting to walk down the aisle inside her workplace. Don Tano assumes her overbearing attitude is due to some anxiety, so he tries to calm her while subtly hinting that she needs to stop thinking about Arturo in Sicily. A week later, Arturo finally has some free time to search for Mr. Guarneri's house in Crisofolo. He goes inside, only to find Sorrow and his friend Mimo rummaging through the place in search of food. The two men promise to locate him soon while offering him a slice of stale cake. The private eats it, much to their disappointment, as they are hungry. Meanwhile, Don Calo meets with Major Mayone and Officer Catelli in some Greek ruins to hand them the list of incarcerated fascists. The Major then gives the list to Arturo to prepare their prison release forms. As he types, Sebastiano climbs up the balcony and asks him if he knows the donkey song. Annoyed by his presence, he throws him a candy bar and sends him off, only for him to reappear seconds later, begging him to write down the missing lyrics to the song. He asks his colleagues about it, who do nothing about it until the boy asks Officer Catelli, who immediately remembers the tune from his childhood. He performs it on the piano as he explains it's a song talking about how change depends on the person. Meanwhile, Sorrow and Mimo walk around the countryside and accidentally stumble upon a pile of dead American soldiers. The latter sees an opportunity to steal a dead paratrooper's boots, but as he does, an American convoy arrives and arrests them. Officer Catelli rounds up the inmates on the list at the Italian prison as they are released after being pardoned by the Allied government. Unfortunately, he finds out they are not fascists but gangsters from the Mafia. The next day, Arturo confides with Officer Catelli about Flora's letter informing him to make haste in getting her father's permission before the wedding day. To help him get his approval, he promises to lend him his military jacket and teaches him how to act like a lieutenant in the army. Later, after pardoning another citizen, Arturo is shocked to see Saro and Mimo in a queue for sentencing, so he tries to get them free through Catelli, only to see Lieutenant Adamski take over the matter. Fortunately, after a ridiculous mistranslated story from the two men, the lieutenant pardons them, thinking they are missionaries. 
At a briefing, Major Mayon informs the unit they will head north to Naples in three days, so they must act quickly to institute a new government in Crisofolo with some trusted Italian individuals. Later, Catelli is suspicious after he meets with a pardoned criminal, dubbed the Animal, to inform him about managing the town's granaries, a job he willingly accepts. He returns to headquarters and furiously confronts the Major, realizing that the U.S. government is leaving organized crime figures in charge of the town. Mayon argues that this is the only way to quell the Nazi invasion, despite being counterproductive to Italy's welfare. He orders him to simply obey the command and let politics take care of itself, but he refuses even if threatened to be tried in court. He blasts off at Arturo, saying he should care more about his country than Flora's father. A while later, Agostino calls for his daughter and Sebastian to come out and see Italian prisoners being freed by the American soldiers. The boy rushes to the plaza, hoping his father is one of the prisoners released, but he ends up disappointed when the truck empties out everyone. Agostino then throws the statue off the balcony, blaming Mussolini for his son's fate. Meanwhile, Don Calo becomes frustrated when his goons tell him they cannot kill Arturo in public and demand they find another way before the wedding. Later, Catelli tells Arturo that Saro and Mimo will take him to see Flora's father. He wishes him luck as he lets him wear his jacket and cap in preparation for this critical moment. As the private leaves, he decides to get on his typewriter to write a letter to the U.S. President about his experience. Eventually, Arturo and the men reach the village, where he humbly asks Mr. Guarneri's permission to marry his daughter. Though lying on his deathbed, he keeps asking about Carmelo, so he tries to dodge the questions by telling him lies and sharing a picture of him and Flora in New York. Eventually, he gets his approval after he declares his love for her. Later in the evening, Mimo confesses how moved he was by Arturo's gesture that he confesses love for Saro, but he refuses, subtly hinting that they should not turn gay. At dusk, Arturo returns to headquarters, only to find it empty. He discovers Catelli's letter addressed to the president about Operation Husky. As he reads it, Sebastian comes by to tell him he was killed by an unknown assailant along the shoreline. Later, while Major Mayon brings the unit to the crime scene, Don Calo testifies that the Nazis were behind the assassination. Arturo mourns Catelli, carrying his casket during the burial, and rests the body in a local cemetery. Sometime later, Operation Underworld comes to fruition as Sicilian crime families take over various businesses and positions of power throughout the city. With them all banded together, they prevented the Communist Party from spreading in Italy, instituting Christian democracy instead. Meanwhile, Lucky Luciano enjoys the benefits of this whole endeavor, as he can expand his business countrywide. As for Arturo, he is left with a notice of discharge from the late Catelli for him to go back to New York and stop Flora's wedding. Before leaving, he writes her a letter about his successful endeavor in getting her father's permission but also says he needs to do Catelli a favor before eloping with her. As she reads this, she excuses herself from her dinner with Carmelo. She packs her things and secretly escapes through the fire escape to fly to Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, Major Mayon gives Don Calo some good news about him becoming mayor of Crisofolo, much to his delight. Arturo later reveals that he came to the White House to personally deliver Catelli's letter to President Roosevelt. Unable to gain entry, he entrusts the envelope with the guard and walks away to sit on a bench. Flora later sits beside him in the evening as they stare at the White House. On October 29, 1943, Captain W.E. Scotton wrote a six-page report entitled, The Problem of the Mafia in Sicily, based on his experience in Palermo. This was given to the Allied military government headquarters. His report detailed the history of the Mafia and concluded with three possible actions, a direct and prompt action to bring the Mafia under control, a negotiated truce with Mafia leaders, and an abandonment of any attempt to control the Mafia in 1946, for his alleged wartime cooperation, Lucky Luciano's sentence was commuted on the condition that he be deported to Italy. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.